I knew everything there was to know about racing BMX, right? Wrong. <laughs> I, 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 I'm standing on the sidelines yelling at Max and Max. Both my, my husband and son are Max, okay? Okay. <laughs> and uh, little Max had finally had enough. At age 11, he comes to me in front of everybody standing out there. Mom, you think this is so easy. Why don't you try it? Okay. <laughs> so Mother's Day of 88. I put on that helmet. Now I'm gonna tell you, back in the day I had an afro that was out to here. Okay. I, I I I I squashed my head into that helmet of his. I put on those gloves that were too small for my hands. And I got on his little 20 inch bike. BMX Breakthrough is bridging the gap from old school to new school, from tracks to manufacturers, from new riders to their local tracks, and it doesn't stop at racing, but the mission is to connect people with bikes. Join me, Jay Oaks, as I interview key people in the sport and in the industry that are involved in their local circles, in their communities, at their local tracks, and aiming to make a difference on a local level. You'll hear stories, marketing tips, failures, successes, and a way to make a difference in your local BMX community. Let's dive in as we kick off this next episode. How are you? I am well, thank you. I returned uh, last night from um, Davenport, Mississippi Valley, uh, BMX. And uh, we had uh, three days of racing, Warnicky, uh State Race, and uh, yesterday was Gold Cup. Oh, wow. So, yeah. How was it? Oh, it's fun. You know, um, this is my second year of going back to racing um, on cement, you know, and, and you have the wooden ramps and what have you. Uh, they really upped it this year in that they had made vast improvements on the ramps that they had for uh, for us to use. Um, and so, wow, yesterday it was almost standing room only. I mean, if you didn't get there early to put your chair somewhere so you could sit in between, you were standing. That's uh, amazing. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, it was it was just a ton of fun. Um, I went back to racing on cement last winter, had not done it. Oh my goodness. It'd been over 20 plus years, but, uh, but yeah. And that's a different kind of racing. Yeah. Than, than, than you know, being out on, on, a, on an outdoor track. So it looks uh, really interesting to me. So I've never raced like that, but last year, whole BMX had an article about it and about the, the Midwest tracks that were doing that. And, I I was fascinated and I don't know why more places don't do it. Like coming from the Northwest, that's perfect because of the yep. amount of rain that we have and being able to, you know, uh, concentrate races like that into, uh, into a space for a short period of time. But it, it just looks like so much fun. It, it really is. And I tell you, one of the things about racing on cement, first of all, the, the facility is a small facility. Okay. And so uh, the, they, 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 they lay out a track that is technical. It is technical, and the technicality come in the comes in the turns, okay? Not in terms of the ramps that you have to, to, okay. to go over, okay? The turns are tight. And when I say tight, I mean they are tight. <laughs> and, uh, and, and, and as a result, if you get four, five, six riders at a time, and there were a couple of gates of eight, then it gets very interesting. Um, I bet. And the, the, the younger kids, the smaller kids, are able to make those tight turns more so than us grown folk or, or teenagers or what have you. Okay. But, okay. But there's a, a neat learning curve uh, to being able to race on on cement and and to do well. So yeah, yeah, that's really neat. Yeah, because I've talked to a couple different people about the 
the old school tracks that they've been recreating. And so um, mm-hmm. uh, up in Angels Camp for Frogtown and uh, down in Temecula, California for uh, for dirty fest. And then they, they have the old school race in Tulsa now. Um, and, and all those things. And the one in Tulsa has the wooden ramps, but the old school tr- uh, dirt tracks, they, it sounds like what you were just describing is it just requires a different skill set. Yes. yes. And yeah. so there's one skill set to modern tracks where, you know, you've got big banked c- c- corners. It's mm-hmm. all about going fast, you know, passing people but then when you have to slow down that's a totally different skill set yes slow down and then start up again start up real fast again yeah you know what I mean? so so yes it is um for, for me and i'll just be honest with you this old lady is 75 doesn't have that skill set that the younger kids have however that doesn't stop me for example, um, in the third turn, the third turn brought you back so that you were now going to be on that last straight. There was no way in the world I was a, and I practiced, and I pra- and I just could not get it. And, and, and so I went to Paul. I said, Paul, um, you know, I'm going to need to swing out into what was the first turn to swing out into that first turn okay and come back in so that i can garner the speed i need gather that speed to get over the last two obstacles and he said we'll do what you have to do so i ended up moving the hay bales that are covered you know with uh with usa bmx and with mississippi valley on them i moved them such that i i I am able to 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 get over the two obstacles that are in the third straight, but I was able to swing out into what would have been the first turn, swing back in, and make it over. And and several young several folks who were younger than me says that was genius. I said no, that's called doing what I needed to do so that I could <laughs> could match could literally get over and across the the last two obstacles because that turn did not allow me and my body <laughs> i just didn't have enough oomph in the legs to do what everyone else did and, and, and so um i made it work i made it work but that's incredible i being able to to recognize that and then being able to figure out the workaround i mean that's just right yes yeah. I mean, it's ingenuity, right? It's figuring out how to make it work for you and there are different tracks. And so there's different standards, there's different pieces to that. So I, that's just, right. it. it's fun. I like hearing that. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what I did uh, for, for all three days, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And of course, as each day went along with each race, I got, got better at making that little turnout and getting back to the fourth street. So yeah. I love that. Yes. Well, you made a you made a comment. So I want to pivot this conversation into another because you Okay. There are so many things that I want to talk to you about and at some point we may just run out of time and have to do something else uh, or have to have another conversation. But yeah, mm-hmm. uh, you just made a comment. You said not many things don't stop you and so mm-hmm. you'll just figure out what you need to do. Right. You sent me the link to this video where I, something I did not know is that at one point you broke your neck and yes. you were paralyzed. Yes. Okay. So obviously that didn't stop you. No. Um, so when was that? And then what was the, what was it like overcome? And that's a massive obstacle. It is. Yeah. Uh, this was the nine, nine, 1993. I was at, uh, the track in uh, Rantoul, Illinois. Um, I had been practicing and had actually learned how to jump doubles. And so this was going to be my first time at a race where I was going to literally jump the doubles. Uh, so 
practicing before the race is, is when the accident happened. They had reworked uh, parts of the track, particularly where the where doubles were located. So that those doubles were still soft in terms of if your bottom bracket or even your pedals hit, they weren't going to kick over. If you understand what I'm saying, the, the pedals yeah. were not going to kick over. Yeah, okay. you would sink in a little bit. Mm. And that is what happened. Um, I'm fully geared. But in jumping the first set of doubles, my I I didn't level I I and I know I did not level my pedals like I should have, mm. and one pedal got stuck, and it would have been my left pedal. I did a header. Um, ended up hitting primarily the 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 left side because the <clears throat> it was a C four five break. Okay, that was the set same type of, of break that Christopher Reeves, who played Superman, had when he was jumping in with his horses. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, ended up, when I say totally paralyzed, I lost total use of arms, legs. They were just gone. And so uh, I was I was taken to hospital. Uh, we, we we're close to, to um, uh, normal Oklahoma. And so the, the the neurosurgeon said, you know, Kitty, if we cannot find a surgeon in Des Moines that can repair, can do what needs to be done for you, you're going to be here for six weeks because there had to be surgery. All right. Well, found found the doctor here in Des Moines. I was and this and this accident occurred on a Sunday. And this was in August. I was then brought back to Des Moines that Wednesday where I met with the neurosurgeon. Okay. And uh, of course, he and my husband are having conversation. I'm, I'm, I'm in the bed of the, you know, and I, and I can't move one way or the other. <laughs> All right. I'm just there. And I'd had a conversation with the neurosurgeon that after the surgery, I will be going and, 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 and getting myself back together again. I was in the best of shape I had ever been in my life. And I was going to get back to that sh best of shape I was in. And I was going to go back to racing. And so my husband, Max, says, I remember this on the right side. The neurosurgeon was on my left side and I'm there unable to move. Couldn't gee no haul. And he says to my husband, I don't think your wife understands the severity of this accident and that she may never regain full use of her arms and legs. And my husband said to the, to the doctor across me, oh, you don't know my wife. She <laughs> said she's going to do something. She's going to do it. <laughs> The surgery was on Thursday, Thursday morning, when that neurosurgeon came into my room that Friday morning. I was standing up by the door. My mother was there. I was standing up by the door. The man just freaked. He said, no way in the world should this have ever been the case. Um, the, the, the spinal cord was bruised not severed okay okay and there's a difference and it was bruised to the point where i could not do anything for me except just be there but the surgery made the major difference because they were able to repair that c45 and so um <laughs> As it turned out, I did go back to racing. Um, now, it took two years before I could feel the bottoms of my feet because the nerves were regenerating. And people are saying, but you still you still raced? You still rode your bike? I said, uh, yes, I did. Uh, I'd already done a number of rag brides because my first one was in night. You know, the rag brides, the registers annual great bike ride across Iowa. Oh, okay. And so I 
did my very first one in 85 and and every year after that and I, i'd already done rag bride because it's the last full week of july and so you you know you get it you you more than get in shape for rag bride so that's why i'm saying i'm on top of my game uh i'm 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 continually get getting myself ready for rag bride but i'm also racing um and so i am healthy i am well hey i'm on top of the show all there were three things, three things that I said I would be able to do. One, I was going to walk out of that hospital. Number two, I was going to, to get back to the, 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 the full strength that I had uh, for myself because of racing and riding bikes. Okay, that was number two. But number three, I was going to use this accident as to work with my students to help them understand you never ever say you can't do something, number one. Number two, you never ever let someone else tell you what you can or cannot do, all right? Now, it took physical physical therapy up the wazoo. Yes, it did. I was not, I was a vice principal at that time. And so because I was in, you know, all, all necked up that I couldn't, you know, you have all this paraphernalia on you. I was out of work for, for six weeks wow. because they were not going to let me come back into the building uh, with with that. Okay, and I understand that. I, un I understand that, okay? But trust you me, every day I was working out, I was uh, regaining the use of my hands and the use of my legs and and uh i had what i needed here at home as well as going to physical out to physical therapy i wasn't going to let that stop me here's something else that i did this was the beginning of of uh technology computers in the schools and uh as vice principal I had put together a program because it didn't exist. I put together a program that had allowed me to, to work with young people who came to see me for whatever the reason was, okay? And so it, it was shared within in my building. So whenever a, a, a teacher had a, a concern, an issue, a problem regarding a student, Rather than just sending the kid down to the office with nothing, they would take a few moments. All they had to do was to fill in the form that was and 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 email it to me. And so I would get that by the time the student walked into my office, so we could sit and talk. Um, now they found a a replacement for me for the six weeks I was gone, and I explained to the gentleman, "You got to learn." the program here okay very simple and he says are you telling me that administrators are going to be engaging in technology uh -huh, yes we are and 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 so i continue to use that within my building but shared it through the district because uh at the end of the school year i was awarded um um uh, you know for 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 tech for for providing and and getting our our um principals vice principals um uh, involved in using technology in their buildings uh now you know kids love technology and even back then when all we had were those uh huge uh uh Apples were, were were what we were using in the beginning. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we were now able to communicate throughout the district amongst one another. And 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 that and that was so important. So I, you know what? Like I tell people, don't ever tell me I can't do something, because I'm gonna <laughs> find a way to make so, it work. So you're just a little bit stubborn then. <laughs> I'm a whole lot stubborn. I not, not a good I, I'm a whole lot. You, you, you know, um, I, I, as I would tell my students, because my last 13 years, I was principal of, of two different alternative high schools. And so 
I had students who were not successful in their comprehensive schools or they were coming back from, from places like, you know, juvenile or even adult uh, 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 situations. Um, a lot of kids who were involved in the gangs. Um, and, and, and so those were my students, all right? And their purpose for being with me, and I did have to remind them, was to earn their high school credits and graduate from high school. And, and I would say to these young people, let me tell you why I'm going to make sure you're doing what you need to do so you graduate from high school. I said, at some point in time, I, I, I plan to retire. And when I retire, I plan to get my Social Security. Now, the only way I'm going to get my Social Security is if you have a J-O-B. Some of the kids got it right off the bat and others go, what are you talking about? I said, look, I'm going to make sure you graduate because I need for you to get out there in that work world and <laughs> contribute, put back in the pot. Because I've been doing that for years so that I can take out the pot, but you've got to put in the pot. And some of the kids will say, well, what about me? I, that's not my problem. I'm not, I'm not going to worry about you, <laughs> about you at that point. Okay. Um, but, but, you know, just having those types of conversations with young people uh, to help them understand what their responsibilities uh, yeah. were going to be. And I still run into many of my former students uh, one way or the other, who say, you know, I appreciate what you did with and for me. Um, they're in the work, they're in the everyday work well, work world. And, uh, you know, they talk about the times that they would come to me, uh, come to my office, or I would see them somewhere else doing something else as, as kids. Uh, and they always talked about, you know, you always had the same message of, uh, doing what they needed to do, taking on that responsibility, because someday they were going to be in, in this everyday world. And That's they got, they, yeah, and they have their own children now. And they say, you know what? Hey, I had that conversation with my own kids. Mm, I understand. I get it. I get it. So, yeah. Well, yeah. And I would assume that you, that you apply, I mean, you've spent a long time working with uh, working with uh, students on various levels um, yes. as a as a vice principal and, and being right. able to to be in the school system and then now you're in the BMX space and you're still working yes. with with students and mentoring. Yes, and I would assume you apply a lot of that. I do. You know, not not only not only young people. I I, I still have conversations. I mean, even this past weekend. Um, as a matter of fact. Uh, on 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 sat Saturday, I had a conversation with um, with the young lady, and I'll call them all young, young man, young lady, because 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 nobody's my age, all right. <laughs> um, and and you know she's had kids who raced, and and now her partner is racing, and uh, I'd had the conversation with her several years ago about racing, and she says, no, I don't want to do that. I just rather stand and look. And I said, wait a minute, baby. Let's get one thing straight. You can stand and look and watch him, but guess what? He gets to stand and look and watch you. Okay? Because you're going to be out there on that track. And, and, and so on Saturday, I had a, several conversations with her throughout the, the day. And she finally acquiesced and said, yes, I'm going to. Uh, because she said, this is our home track here in Des Moines. And, and she says, okay. Okay, I, I'm going to get involved. And and so, you know, he, he was so happy. He said, oh, my goodness gracious, Kitty. Yes, I'm glad she is going to do it. And I said, you actually have a bike for her too, don't you? He said, yes, I do. Yes. Okay. <laughs> um, had a conversation with some other folks from our track, just having, talking about some some things that we are going to do that will be more inclusive of girls and women, uh, but it'll be more family oriented. Um, I, I mean, when I got involved back, back, and that was back in the day when I got involved back in 88, um, you know, I was standing on the sidelines watching uh, my husband and, and my son race. Now we were cyclists, 
because we had been riding bikes forever and a day, BMX is a whole lot different. It is not the same. Okay. And and, and the other thing is um, I coached uh, uh, junior high and high school. That's how far back I go. Junior high and high school uh, basketball, uh, softball, and track. Okay. So, and I even had my coaching license. You know, you had to have a coaching license to do that. So I knew everything there was to know about racing BMX, right? Wrong. <laughs> I, I, I'm standing on the sidelines yelling at Max and Max. Both my, my husband and son are Max, okay? Okay. And uh, little Max had finally had enough. At age 11, he comes to me in front of everybody standing out there. Mom, you think this is so easy. Why don't you try it? Okay. <laughs> so Mother's Day of 88. I put on that helmet. Now I'm gonna tell you, back in the day, I had an afro that was out to here. Okay. I, I I I squashed my head into that helmet of his. I put on those gloves that were too small for my hands, and I got on his little twenty inch bike. Now you know we had Mother's Day race, and so and and this was in Marion, um, um, Iowa, which is about two hours, um north and east of Des Moines. Uh, it's right there near Cedar Rapids. Okay. And so, and so uh, I get out there with the other moms. Now, I'm the oldest mom out there because I, I, I'm already 39 going on 40. I didn't win the race. But I garnered a whole new appreciation for what BMX was all about. And mind you, if we look at tracks back then compared to today, those tracks were tame compared to what the tracks are today. And, 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 and so over the years, I am continuing to learn how to ride my bikes, how to race my bikes. And people say, what are you talking about? You've been doing this now for 35 plus years. It's a piece of cake. Mm, I am 35 years older. That's a whole lot right there. Okay. I'm not that spring chick that I used to be. I, I know that there are certain things that even as a racer, I'm not going to do. Do I jump anything? Oh, no, 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 no. Honey, I push down on that bike <laughs> to make sure that those wheels stay on the ground. And there are times, depending on the track, your front tire is going to, you know, lift up and off. Yeah. So, yep. And so you've got to know how to keep that, that bike where you want it. Now, the kids love jumping. I say, y'all jump on it. Okay. Don't expect this old lady to do that because that is not what I am going to do. But I am going to continue to engage in this sport. As a matter of fact, my um so so the, the other side of the of a story is I have severe osteoarthritis. Now that's not a result of the accident that I had in 93 because it was discovered back in uh the 70s that I had arthritis. I used to run. I loved running. I loved running, but I also rode my bike. So I'd ride my bike to school. We had a running club. And the kids were, there were a couple of kids who loved to come early in the morning. And, and we'd run three miles just for the heck of it. Okay. Uh, and so I'd do that. And then I would ride my bike home in, in after school. Um, and, and, and so my ankles kept swelling. And I didn't understand why my ankles were swelling. Of course, I, I went to my doctor and he said, um, Kitty, I'm going to x-ray these. Now, when he said these, he wasn't talking about my ankles. He was x-raying my legs. And what was found were hundreds of little cracks in the legs. Okay? Wow. And he said, point blank, you will never run again or I will cast up your legs until those, those little cracks heal up. 
Now, I just looked at him and I said, why is that? He says, I'm not surprised one or the other of your legs had not exploded, which, which can happen when you have hundreds of cracks in the bones of your legs. And so I just went to biking, period. And, okay. and that, was, that was back in the 70s. That's how I got to, to, to I, I, I even started racing, road racing and, and mountain bike racing. I still have my very first road bike. It's um, Trek 300 Elance. Really? I, I, yeah, I still have that bike. And 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 so now I had other bikes before then, uh, you know. But but in terms of a a, a night, that was a great road bike back in its day. Um, and I didn't have to spend an arm and a and, and a leg for it either. Okay, um, but the cycling is something that that you know it's just pure joy. You can just ride forever. Uh, you want to clear your mind. Take a ride. All right. You want to think, opine, figure out something, get on your bike and just ride. Okay. And and I never mind riding by myself. In fact, I enjoyed it. That was that was pure joy for me. Because I didn't have to worry about anything or anybody else. It was just me and my bike. Uh, I love that. But when I got into the racing, now I still have I still have bikes because I still have my original bike. I still have a I have a hybrid. Uh, I have um, I have a couple of e bikes, also. Okay. Um, but I do have my original. Um, my 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 first bike, first race bike, for for BMXing was the one my husband was riding. And so he said, well, here, honey, you take this one and I'll get another one, which he did. The one he gave me, though, that I still have is um, a, a 1983 non-serial Hutch 24-inch. So I still have that bike. I only use it for OG races. Um... And then in 2012, because of the continual issues, arthritis was now just doing this, just doing a job on me. Um, Rick Montanaro, who who owns Standard, builds the Standard bikes. Okay. Okay. Built a 26 inch cruiser, but it was built to specifications because. I was having issues with the hips and the knees, just being able to ride. Okay. I was not going to stop riding. I was not going to stop racing. Because you're Call stubborn. It. Call it what you like. <laughs> Call it what you like. Here's the thing. No, I <laughs> love I, I say that as a joke, but I, I, I absolutely that. love that. But, but but here's the thing. Wherever I would go, I'm always encouraging women and girls to get involved. So if I'm going to come to you, and say, you know what? You need to come on out here with us. Am I supposed to be standing on the sidelines having this conversation and not engaging? Or am I to be out there with you? Which is amazing. And, yes, of course. You know, when I when when, when I started racing, the uh um I I went to the to, to cruiser, I'm not yeah, to the uh cruiser bike. Not the little twenty inch, but the cruiser because I had ridden little Max's twenty inch, and I said, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, I can, I can move. Whoa, <laughs> you know this 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 bad boy is just too small. I can't I can't do what I want to do because Max was still a little kid on a twenty inch. All right, um, and and so the cruiser made a lot more sense because it it was more in line with uh, the sizes. Of um, of a of a mountain bike or even the road bike, the frame frame wise, you know, because it was a twenty four inch. Now, when I had the the other bike built, when when uh, Rick built the other 
exclusive for me, it was 26 inch, uh, which was much, much more in line with okay. uh, mountain bikes and, and, and road bikes. And, and, and so there's a comfort level with that size uh, of, of bike. But I had the 24 inch, okay? And there were three of us racing, my husband, son, and me. And, and um, uh, y y you know, we, we were doing this uh, literally every weekend. Uh, we've started racing nationals. Lil Max started first, and then, then my husband and I. And now we find ourselves weekends traveling uh, to, to, to race. Now, before race, the nationals tended to be just two day. Okay, they're now three days. Um, and um, one of the things we found ourselves doing, I'd get the car or the, the van all packed up on Thursday evenings because Friday after school, we were taking off to go somewhere. And it wasn't always just close by or somewhere that we were going because we would be driving into the night, early mornings, Saturday mornings to get to the race. Um, so we would race, you know, Saturday afternoons or evenings, whenever that race was, and then Sunday mornings, the race and packed up right after the race. And we had to head back uh, to the morning because both of her both of us were were educators, and we had to be in our buildings. Um, yep. Uh, for Lil Max, the, the the deal, plain and simple, was by the time we got to wherever it was we were racing for the weekend, his homework had to be finished. No two ways about it. Can I do this on Sunday? Mm -hmm. Nope, 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 nope. You be too tired on Sunday. Doesn't work that way. Um, and so. BMXing and or cycling became our lives. Um, we've traveled all over the United States and part of Canada to race. Um, as Lil Max got older, I mean, he continued to, to, to race through high school. He did 11 rag brides. His first one was at age seven. He raced from seven clear through high school. Um, yeah, wow is right. <laughs> um, and he even raced BMX in college before it was a collegiate sport. Because really? he graduated, yeah, he graduated from college in 01 and, and it, it was not a collegiate sport in 2000. And where did he go to school at? He went to the University of Nebraska out in Kearney, in okay. Kearney, Nebraska. And Carney has a racetrack out there also. So he, he was able to practice, uh, he could continue to engage. And, and it was so funny. Max would show up at, at, at nationals and, and, and young men that he had been racing with growing up. Max, what are you doing here? You, you, you in college out there? How you get here? Honey, we, we'd fly him out of there so he could get to, get to nationals. Uh, he had to take care of business in the classroom, okay? He also worked. He had three gigs, three jobs while he was in college. Hey, our deal was my husband and I paid tuition and room and board at least for the university. He was responsible for everything else. Wow. And so the other thing that this did for him, because I'm going to tell you right now, I had three jobs when I when I came to Drake. I, I, I didn't have a choice. Um, there were seven of us kids, and, and my parents didn't have money back then to, to pay for me to come here. Uh, and so I did what I needed to do. I had um, uh, grants, aid, uh, a small scholarship, um, a small, a small uh, loan, uh, because my parents wouldn't sign for a student loan. I, I, I. I understand that. And that's why when it was time for Max to go to school, no, we're not doing loans, baby. Here's how we're going to make this work for you. <laughs> we'll pay the tuition. We'll pay the room and board. you going to take care of everything else, your books or whatever else you got, you need that you have to have. Okay. And so he did that. 
it helped him as it did for me when I came here to really develop the ability to know what it was I had to do and when it had to be done, okay? That didn't stop me from having fun because I was uh, on anything my dorm was involved in, I was a part of. Um, recreationally, I was a part of it. You know, I even learned how to play pool. And, wow. and, and as a matter of fact, yeah, and, and, and understood that pool is nothing but geometry. Made some, it started making sense. Okay. Yeah. But I played field hockey. I never ever heard of field hockey when I came here in 1966. But I played field hockey and I learned how to guard my shins, that's for sure. Because you <laughs> do not want to get whacked with the with that ball or the stick. Uh, I, I was on our dorm basketball team. There's um even in the yearbook, there there's a photo of, of me uh, playing basketball. I went, oh, when was that taken? Oh, when you were out there playing basketball or or uh, uh, volleyball or uh, what whatever sport there was for women, um, I got involved with. Now keep in mind that there were not women did not have the same numbers of sports in college that men had, that didn't come about until Title Title 19 came along. Okay. Okay. And so, um, you know, we didn't have the same access, but, but that's okay. That's okay. One of the things I loved about and still do about this sport of BMX, you have the little bitty ones now some barely two years old out there on their striders and it, uh, it's so magical yes yes and and the nice thing about the striders is they're not separated into the girl striders and the boy striders. they're just striders yeah and i'm telling you what them little girls can get out there and, and, and haul on those striders <laughs> which i love i enjoy that so much the other thing that's come about is, is the continual growth of girls and women, mm -hmm. also men. I have a, a number of men who come to me and say, um, you know, their kids are involved in the sport. <laughs> and, the, and the kids will say, okay, so, Dad, how come you don't come out here and do this with us? Uh, Mom, why don't you come out here and do this with us? Um, and I've had them come to me now and say, point blank, uh, it's because of you that I'm doing this now. And I said, no, blame it on your kids. Don't blame, don't put that on me now. <laughs> put that on your kids. They said, well, my kids already told me if, if Miss Kitty is doing it, that I should be doing it. <laughs> and so. Uh, I love that. And so I, I, I think that is so important. You know, what we have found, and this is truly a family sport. I have found cycling. Just cycling itself is a family activity yeah. and becomes a family sport. And that's been true of BMX because wherever we would go, it was families that were always there. Um, with women, one of the things I would say was, you know, you come to all the practices and you come to, to all the, 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 the races that they have. So why are you standing there rather than on the bike out here? We're talking about health and wellness now. All right. Um, the other thing I have, uh, I, and I continue to say to people, is I'm not here to win races. Okay. Now I won races. Yes, I have. I've finished, I've podiumed a number of times. But what I do every time I get on the track is I look for improvements in myself because I'm still growing. I am still learning. No two tracks are the same. And so that being the case, you're learning every time you get on another track. Ah, oh, but what about your home track? You've raced it hundreds of times. Mm, let me tell you about that. <laughs> I 
I'm not in the same gate every time. I, and I'm not always riding with the same people every time. Okay. So when I practice, I want to practice coming out of every gate. I want to be able to ride that track in a manner where I'm not running the same line on the track every time. Because when you're with other racers, you may not be able to ride that line that you've grown accustomed to. Um, so it's a continual, ongoing learning process. How much longer am I, am I going to be racing? Well, as I told my my hand surgeon, because because the arthritis, I mean, I have severe osteoarthritis. And I said, when I can no longer grip the handlebars, that's when I'll have to give up racing because I'm not going to uh, endanger anyone else, much less myself, out on that track. Now, I've had to stay healthy as best I can. They can't do surgery on the hands. Well, they can, but then you don't, you're not able to, to really grip the handlebars like you should. Okay. And if yeah. someone knows of, of whatever unique, whoever's hearing this, something that can, would make it easier to grip the handle, let me know. I need to know that. Okay. Because that'll, yes. that, that'll prolong my racing. I've had both hips and both knees replaced due to Arthur. You know, Arthur is in my life. I've had uh, two back surgeries now due to Arthur. Wow. Um, and you would you would think that, well, is the is the riding and racing creating the the arthritis? No, no. Arthur came to me back 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 when I was in my twenties, minding my own business. Okay. Um, it runs in the family and, 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 and I have it. Um, but you, but you have done a really good job because in all the things that you have talked about, there are a lot of people that would use those excuses. We, I mean, we, you, you see people all the time. I see people that use really small excuses to turn into much bigger problems. Yes. And you have, you have some pretty big excuses that you could have used. Yeah, yeah. And but you're not willing to. No, no. Let me tell you what. You can only go around once. Okay. I this the, uh, what I do, life is joy. Understand? Life is joy. You never ever let anyone steal your joy. I tell that to my students. I tell that to other people I work with. Um uh, other adults, especially. Never let anyone ever steal your joy. So what is your joy? And you must have joy in life. Because life is joyful. Yeah, I know there are all kinds of, of issues. Uh, and, and, and no two of us are alike in terms of our health. Okay. But what is it that you can do? What is it that you can share that will uh, that will bring joy to someone else? Like, my life is not about me. My life is about we, W-E, and the, T-H-E-E, -E, okay? Life is not about yourself. It is about what you can do that will lighten someone else's load, bring a little light into someone else's life, okay? Because that comes back around. Kids would tell, I, I would always talk to, talk to my students about, we all have a certain amount of water in our glasses, okay? And some have a little less than others. I get that. But, do you look at it as your glass is only half full? Or what can I do to fill that glass again? 
I keep my glass full because I'm always doing something, not just for me. It is not about me. But I want to continue to engage in those activities that will have that will bring a, a, a joy to other folks because then, hey, that comes back to me. It, it, it really does. Um, this became even more evident as, as principal of an alternative high school. That was the last 13 years of my career where I, I'm working with students. Oh my goodness gracious, honey, let me tell you, it was woe is me every day. So what could I do? What is it that I was able to do to help these young people understand and realize, yeah, you know, you, you've been thrown a curve that we couldn't straighten out if we tried. So why don't we find a way to get around that curve, to get over that curve, to get under that? What is it that we are going to do? And, and I say we. Not what are you going to do, but what will we do together that's going to make a difference for you? And it might not be immediate. It might be down the road. I used to have students who came to see me every morning before they went to their first period class. Really? I had to get the hair screwed on straight, baby. <laughs> had to help them understand. This is still a good day. It may be raining out there, but not in here. Okay? Whatever was going on in home, in family, out there, that um, you're not quite ready for class, what, what, what are we going to do? And I, and I have to say we, because I can't make the difference by myself. The other side of the coin was I wanted young people to know that they needed to start and continue to do self-talk. Mm -hmm. Self-talk, T-A-L-K. Now, we do that all the time when we stop and think about things. Only we, only we are not talking about it out loud. Okay. And so we would do some self-talk. Okay, uh, what class do you have today? Because one of the things I did with, with my alternative high school, you know, I had students who had to work, not because they were supporting the car, but they had to help put money back into the household. They had a bill that they had to pay, okay, to keep the roof over their heads. I had many students who were living with grandparents and great-grandparents. And so they had to help sustain their, their, their life in that family, all right? And, and so I changed the way we attended classes such that, and the other thing was, I wanted students to know we weren't going to meet every day. Your class was going to meet every other day for 90 minutes, okay? That made a difference for a number of students because they had to work. So now they could work Monday, Wednesday, alternating Fridays, all day, or as long as they needed to for whomever their employer was, all right? And then on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and alternating Fridays, they could concentrate on their studies. And people looked at me and go, well, why would, why would you do that? Well, now let's stop and think about this for a minute. Okay. I want my young people to know I'm going to be there every day for them. That I, and, and, and people tell you, I come to school sick because that was my job was to be there for them. Okay. But changing up the schedule in a manner that allowed them to go to school and to work made a tremendous difference. So I will see you on Mondays and Wednesdays. And, and before you go to your first period class, stop by. We're going to have us a little chit chat, a little conversation. Because I want to know how your weekend was. You know, some kids don't eat. They don't get to eat. 
Yeah. Which, oh. which, which happens still. It still happens. Yeah. And you can't get certain folks to understand that we need to make sure you, when I first went to the alternative school, they weren't, ha they didn't have breakfast and lunch. I go, what do you mean? They don't serve them breakfast and lunch. Well, they're only here for part of the day. And got that changed. We did breakfast and we did lunch. And some of those kids left right after they ate lunch because they were only taking two, maybe three classes. Okay. Summer school I loved. I had summer school for my kids. Now they were there every day. They could only take two classes. But we had breakfast. And we had lunch. And oh, by the way, we used the community as our school. You see, learning, when, when you learn something, you need to be able to make application of whatever it is you've learned. Why do I have to take algebra? <laughs> I'm sure you've heard that before. <laughs> okay. You use algebra every day of the week. Oh, by the way, I included cycling in the things that I did with my students. People gave me bicycles. And I used, uh, now I, 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 I didn't do BMX with my students. They always asked me about it. My trophies were in my office. But here's why I did bicycling. Kids would get a bike, find a bike, or sometimes they got a bike that wouldn't is, okay? Ride it a couple of blocks and drop. Because that's what they would do. They really didn't know how to ride and enjoy riding. Okay. That's so important to be able to take your bicycle and ride it and enjoy it. And oh, by the way, do we know the physics of cycling? They look at me. Well, of course, the tire layout. How far does your tire, which may be a 26 inch by one and a half, compare to that 20 inch bike? And have you seen somehow skinny some of the tires are on those little racing bikes that those kids ride? But we would compare those. Oh, how many gears do you have on that bike that you're riding? Hmm. If we were to go 100 yards, how many revolutions would you need to take? Okay. Y you see, what I want students to do is to, to, to take what we are learning and apply it. To that bicycle. I've done all kinds of, of uh, one week camps with groups of kids. This year will be year 16 that I'm doing uh, a week with the Police Activities League and, and a, a, a member of our uh, city council. We've been doing this for 16 years now. Okay. Wow. I do others because I have people who will invite me. You know, a church group will want me to work with their students. Um, uh, 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 oh, some, some other entities will ask. And I said, here's my requirement. One, this is the week I can do it. I'm going to give you five days, okay? They have to be there every day. Every day. We are going to do, we're going to do a bike check the week before we do the week of cycling, okay? Because I want to make sure <laughs> that your bicycle is in tip-top shape. And I'm able to have the kids take their bikes. We get them down to the, to the street collective um, and uh, they go through those bikes. And if the bike is one that, mm, very questionable, very questionable, can't do that, they'll get a gently 
used new bike. They trade in the old for a gently used bike. Now, I have some kids sometimes who will say, but I, that's my bike and I want, mm, honey, you can't be a part of what we're doing if you won't think you're going to ride that bike because it is not safe. We get helmets for the kids. We get little fanny packs and I get bottles. We put bottle cages on the bikes. By the end of the week, not only do, the, do these young people know about their bicycle. You know, when you ask them what the ABCs of, of the bike are, what does the A stand for? Oh, air. Air where? In the tire. Do you know what, how much air you put in your tire compared to how much air you put in, they put in their tire? And this is true with, with, with BMX bikes. Now, I keep my... I keep my air at 60, okay, 60 PSI. However, depending on the condition of the track, I may reduce the amount of air, okay? Some tracks are so hard that, that you don't want to feel every bump, That's <laughs> it. and it's not smooth, okay? So you don't want to... You don't want to feel every bump. Uh, I asked the students, what does the B stand for? A was air, B, oh, brake. Okay. How do you take care of your brake such that it's, and depending on the type of, of brake setup that you have, you certainly don't want that brake the, the, the pad rubbing on the tire, but rather on the rim of the tire. So we've got air, we've got brake, C, chain. Now, at the, at the races this weekend, there was a grandfather who was, you know, testing the how much give there was in that chain. And I was just walking by, minding my own business as he was doing this. I said, that chain needs to be tightened up a little bit. And he looked up, he said, oh, Miss Kitty, that's what we're going to do right now. Because the chain was, hey, get out there and, 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 and run with a loose chain if you want, depending on how much torque. Oh, what is torque? See, we have to have all kinds of discussions. Yeah. Uh, uh and, and so all of this, you know, this is continual learning with a bicycle. So with the chain, now I'm telling you right now, I do not put oil or grease on my chains. Um, I use that dry. I, I want I, it, it works. Okay. Okay. Because oily, greasy chains attract dirt. Mm -hmm. Then you got to clean them all the time. And so, how do I clean my chain? Well, I know how I clean my chain, but I'm going to teach you how to, if you don't have what you need to remove that dirt from your chain, we get some rags and we just run it through. Run, you know, you, you hold, hold the rag with the chain that's in it and you just run it, run it. Wow. So so, so, so we learn those things, but then we also learn how to ride the bicycles, ride with groups. I want, you know, to, to, today in, in any city, there are bike trails, there are bike lanes in the city, there are bike trails that will get you from one part of the city to the other. Uh, we even teach you how to put your bike on the bus because the front of the bus as places where you can put your bike. I, I, I one one of the things that that Sun Max was able to do because I, I'm I'm still in the house that he grew up in. My husband and I bought this house uh, back in '77 before Little Max was born. Okay, and back then there were just a couple of trails, so he had to ride in the street to get to wherever it was he wanted to get to. And people would call and say, Kitty, I saw Lil Max over here by Easter Lake. Uh, that's about four miles away from here. 
one question. Did he have a helmet on his head? <laughs> now you know back in the in in the early eighties they just did not make bike helmets for kids, so we got hockey helmets for them. Yeah, and he used to say, "No, nobody else's. Your name is not nobody else. Okay, your name <laughs> is Matt, and you wearing that helmet." Don't wear the helmet. The bike is mine. You don't want that. And we never stopped you from riding. So he loved, he loved, he, he, and I was glad that he loved cycling because husband and I enjoyed cycling. And that's what we did first before he got into the BMX. Uh, what was the cycling? And the right. kids would then say to me, well, well, when can we go out to the BMX track? Because typically the kids had BMX type bikes, if you understand what I'm saying. Yeah. I did not allow them to, to ride that track with pigs. And they, why can't, uh -uh. no, no, you're not riding the track that I, I helped build, that I sacrificed and got what we needed. You're not riding that track with pigs on, but you're not going to tear it up. <laughs> well, you know, you, you'll fall and, and those pigs will dig in uh, or you'll hit somebody. Uh, mm -mm, no pigs. And I even had parents who fussed about, well, they they don't, they they want to ride their bike, but they wouldn't be able to. Have... Look, I said, no pigs, only the bike. You know, trying to get parents to understand there are certain certain things. For for example, they have, you know, you have to you have to wear pants, long pants, long sleeve shirts, helmets on your head. I highly recommend gloves, but I'm not gonna force you to wear gloves. All right. Um, and parents say, but it's hot. Ooh. Safety first. Safety is always first. Then we get out there. And after the kids hit the dirt two or three times, the parents begin to understand. Now, one of the nice things that 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 we do at tracks now is we have these beginner uh, leagues. Um, and we have them for all ages. One of the things that I've already had some conversations with some of the folks at our track is, you know what? We will have some ladies nights or some ladies afternoons on Saturdays or some ladies mornings before the Saturday race. I know about these because this is the second year I'm going, uh, I leave on Wednesday to go to San Antonio, Texas uh, to, to, to work out with the ladies. And, and, and we'll, we'll work out from, oh, she has that set up. So we go from 10 to two and then we will have a race at three. And what we will do is we are going to spend time learning the aspects of BMX racing. Now, at tracks, I like to start at the rear, at the at the end of the track, because the the the, the uh, starting heel could be intimidating, you know, oh. because people come um, and and the first thing they see, oh, you you, we gonna, we gonna start there, now now mind you that that the starting heel isn't <laughs> once once they learn once they get to it, they realize that the purpose for the starting heel is just to give you, allow for that momentum so you can ride the track and you're not gonna be riding it as fast as, as uh, we probably would if we were in an actual race. But you start at the end of the track. And I like that because one of the things I say is if you can ride a track backwards, that's a good track. And folks look at me and go, why? Well, and you will have the same, you know, the, the one of the nice things about it is if you have doubles, then you're going to be able to ride the double backwards. You can ride, uh, and, and, and if you want to ride a tabletop, if I can ride that tabletop backwards, that means that that landing, because, you know, kids like to ride it and, 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 and then 
jump over the tabletop or, but you want to be able to have a landing that will keep you on your bike. Oh, I ride the, I ride the berm. I ride the, the, the berms backwards. Yeah. Uh, if I can ride that berm backwards, that's a good berm. Because that means I can come into that berm and I'll be able to come out of that berm to continue on the track. Now, there are some places where I have been where you cannot necessarily ride the entire track backwards. Uh, that really? is started. The yeah, because uh, it, it's just because of the way that it has been built. When you ride it the regular way, okay, come out of the gate and it, it rides. It rides, but for some reason, it's difficult to ride the track backwards I, i'll track i can ride backwards so i i enjoy our track i can ride it backwards i can ride yeah i can do it either way um the other thing is if i am able to literally take maybe one or two cranks out of the gate and just pump the rest of the track that's a good track, okay? Um, and it doesn't matter what the elements are. Being able to pump that push and pull, because you have to develop that. Yeah. Uh, I, and, and, and I'm still working on, on push-pull. <laughs> um, but I enjoy, I enjoy that. And, and sometimes, especially some of the older kids, um, what you know will 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 do that they that hey they decide amongst themselves that that they're going to pump the track and not that it's a pump track that's not what i'm saying but it's a track that allows you uh to do that even with with all the you know you have your tabletops you have you, and of course you've got the rhythm section of your track um but there are other I'm just thinking about our own track. I can come out. I'll have enough speed to get up and over. The that, that It's a tabletop that now takes you down into the, the first turn. And you can, in that first turn, you got some speed on you. Even if you are just pumping. And it'll take you out and up, over, into to the second set of elements on that track. Um... I've done that, and and I continue to do that because that helps me to develop strength in in, in arms and and uh, and legs. I love that. It's such a valuable skill, the ability to pump, and um, I mean, it, and you can tell, you can see a visible difference between somebody who doesn't understand the concept of pumping and one that does, and. I remember meeting a, a guy that was just just an amateur racer, um, never raced pro at all, but he is very fast. And he said that for a long time, he was following one of Greg Hill's training programs oh, and yes. their whole team, um, every single week, they would have one night where they would do only pump yeah. and all night long, they wouldn't, they wouldn't pedal. No. And He's and he said it was very strict, and we would focus on just learning how to pump the bike faster. There you go. So yeah. it's valuable. It, it is one of the other things, and and I'm glad that that uh, USA BMX got back to where kids cannot where cannot clip in mm -hmm. until they are at least thirteen and intermediate. Okay. I never clipped in still. And people look at me and go, you've been doing all this right. Mm -hmm. I'm not, I clipped in on my road bike. I clipped in on my mountain bike, but not on that BMX bike. Cause you know what? I want to be able to put a foot down. I don't care where I am. I want to be able to get that foot down. All right. And, and, and even at my age, I can't do that fast enough if I'm clipped in because see, that's one more thing I have to concentrate on while I'm riding. Um, what I'm finding is as people, uh, older people are getting into the sport, they are not clipping in. And, and, and that's a good thing. 
That that yeah. really is. Yeah. And they say, no, I never thought about. It. My son never wore clips. He said, he said, my, and he would beat the, he would whip on folks, whip up on people. I love and that. They, yeah. Uh, but I think that's important. And one of the things we need to understand, you know, when the pros started out, I don't know if they if they were clipping in back in the earlier days when they were racing. Um. I don't think so. I don't think so because toe clips weren't, they didn't race with toe clips. And so it would have just been in the, what, mid to late nineties. Right, 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 right. Yeah. So. And, and, and I would have these conversations with parents who say to me, but it helps my, it helps my child go faster. I said, let me tell you what your child needs to develop before clipping in. They need to develop the ability to be able to race, okay. I'm, I, I mean, yeah, but you know, they, they get to go. Uh, no, no, they're not going faster. Here's here's the problem. They really don't know how to ride the track until they have done it without their feet being clipped into something. Um. <laughs> I know uh, yesterday uh, I had a, a father say to me that his daughter, who is fast, she the, the, she turns 13 and he says she can't wait. She turns 13 in March. She cannot wait till she turns 13 because she can go back to her clips now. Now, she had to come out of them. But the girl has developed some skills that are just out of this world. So putting the clips on for her is going to work well. Okay. Yeah. Because when she had to take them off, she still had to figure out ways to master the track with speed. And, well, and so I said, well, yeah, she's going to really appreciate it. And I said, I watched her and I watched her over the last two years. And that girl can ride a bike. Oh, yeah. Well, and what you're describing, too, is the same reason that I won't I won't buy my kids lighter parts for their bikes. They're they're five and seven and they've got they've got race bikes. And at yeah. this point, people because there are a lot of dads that will go through and they'll continue to upgrade their kids bikes. And yeah. and by the time these kids are you know, sometimes seven, eight, 10, 11 years old, they are, they have a bike that is so built out that there is no improvement that can be made on the bike. Right. And, and for my uh, five and seven, I, I, I've told people I will put a heavier fork on before a lighter one because they need to learn how to pedal their bike faster if they want to go faster. And there's skill that needs to be developed in the same way that I've told people for years not to get on a full suspension mountain bike before riding a hardtail. And ideally, don't get on a hardtail before you've ridden a rigid BMX bike <laughs> because there are skills that you learn on bike handling. And yes. and I think and the biggest example of that is if you see somebody that's on that's only ever been on a full suspension mountain bike and they start jumping, you can tell that they don't have the same bike management skill. Right. And right. and I think it's just so valuable for kids to learn that skill, learn how to maneuver that bike when it's heavier. And then the lighter bike, it may help, but that that can't be the means to get there. Right. So. Yes. Yeah, definitely. Um, <laughs> what... That one of the things we we did not do as parents is, and, and you're absolutely right. Number one, we had Max learn how to wrench his own bike. Okay. That's good. That paid off in the end because from the time he was in eighth grade through high school graduation, he worked in a bike shop and he brought with him skills already which the owners of the shop were, they just, we thought maybe we would have to spend time teaching him. I don't know, understand something. Max had not only to wrench his bike, he had to wrench my bike. <laughs> okay. And and as my hands, I, and I tell you, 
I used to be able to change a tire. I, I just don't have it in my hands anymore with the author mm. to, 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 to do that. Okay. But that was the other thing we, we, we also, and when I, when I work with, with groups of kids, teach them how to change a tire, how to uh, put, oh, you know, if you, if you get out on the road and find that your tire is flat, how you have this little kit, because we give each of the kids a little kit so that they can find where the hole is and patch up that hole. Oh, somebody always has a pump. We always have pumps, okay? I like that. Again, okay. Um, teach kids how to um, uh, when they when they put on a um, t take the tire off, but you got to put it back on. Sometimes you have to do all kinds of crazy things with your chains, so they learn how to break a chain. Okay, and we do that on purpose because I want them to be able to put that chain back on that. You know. You got your front part, you got your back part, you got to put it back together again. Um, these are just skills that you need if you're going to be out there riding. Because we give the kids spare tubes, okay? Um, because you never know, and you don't. And we have, it never fails. It never fails with every group, at least one someone ends up with a flat and uh, we work together. And that's the other side of the coin that I really enjoy about this is that the kids work together to so that we can all get back on the road again, so to speak. I mean, we're typically on trails um, when, when, when we're doing all of this. So heck that's yeah, right. you know. Before I forget, I had another question in regards okay. to earlier. Um, mm -hmm. So we're going back a little ways, but you were talking about when you started racing and mm -hmm. how there weren't a lot of women in the sport. Oh, so cool. did you have any, you traveled to nationals, you traveled lots of weekends to races. Yeah. How often was it that you actually found another woman that you were racing against? In in the beginning, that was a rarity. When I started racing, there was one other woman. Okay. Okay. Who was my age, and so and we had to race with the men, which I on, didn't mind. On the national level or local? At, level? On the national level. Oh no, on the national okay. level. Oh no, local level was even scarcer. Okay. Uh, on the national level, when I began racing nationals, I raced with the men. Um, I don't know if I sent a picture of. I think there was a picture I sent. I saw one in the in in the video that you had sent over, and it was in the email yeah. as well. Okay, okay. Yeah. Of you okay, in the so, you in the middle, in second right. place. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Other men behind me, and some up front. Um, I mean, that's just how it was. There were no, there was no women's cruiser class. There yeah. was really no women's twenty inch class. Typically, the girls would race up to age eighteen, and then they didn't race anymore. Okay. Because because there was the, the the thought wasn't there or no one thought that they would want to continue racing. They probably did locally, but not nationally. Okay. There was one other woman national who was in my age group. There were no other women at the at the time. Okay. So um we raced the two sanctioning bodies, NBL, National Bicycle League. And then it was just ABA, American Bicycle Association. And uh, there were times that, that she and I were in the same moto. Okay. Uh, typically. How, at, and at, how old was she comparatively to you? Oh, we were the same age. Oh, same, okay. Yeah we, could be, yeah, we were the same age because we were in the same class. Age grew. You know, the men even then had five-year increments in the cruiser class. Okay. Now, at, at, when I began racing, I did not race 20 inch. I picked that up a couple of years later. All right. Uh, and, and, and picking it up a couple of years later, we were now getting girls to stay who were, who were now 18 and over. Because I raced with, with girls who became pros on 20 inch. 
Wow. And, you know, they still talk about that now. I mean, I know who they are. I mean, you know, we, we race one another. Um, and uh, <laughs> there was no way I was going to find myself in racing pros because I had me a full-time gig. And so, and I was older. I was, I was old enough to be some of their mamas. Okay. Definitely. All right. But when we, when I started racing, it was in the cruiser class. And, uh, you know, the women were out there hanging on the fence, watching their husbands race. But they, they wanted to race, but that was not something that they could either do or were encouraged to do. So that's when I started having conversations with them. You know, you want, you want to be, come on, let, let's come on out here. The first women's cruiser class, it was with the NBL. And I tell you what, we had 35 and over. Well, yeah, I was way over 35 at the time. And then it was uh, the 18 to, 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 to 34. That okay. was the first. Okay. And, and so, that was, and that was cruiser. That was cruiser. Okay. But that was, that didn't come about until my years of racing with the men. And, 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 and here's what I said to the men, because you know what, my, my end of the year plate number was smaller than their number was. Okay. <laughs> I mean, one year, my, with MBL, my, my, my number was 22 and there were men who had 23, 24, 25, and six on down the road. And so I said, let me tell you something. You don't want me in your class then you're going to help me make class for women. That's how we do this. Sign the petition. And that's how we wound up getting women's classes because I was, I'll, I'll tell you one year and I wish I could remember the year. This was the, uh, this was at Nash, Grand Nationals. On Friday, we had, uh, uh, it wasn't called Race of Champions. It was called something else, that Friday race uh, with NBL. Okay. Okay. I made it to the five, I was one of the eight, made it to the, to be one of the top eight, okay? I had gate eight. Now, I don't know if you've been to the, if you've been to Louisville, if you ever raced the Louisville track. I have not. Oh, my goodness gracious. Not, not since they changed it. They changed it and put in this huge hill and all that, but that was, you came out of the gate and that first turn, it was a huge, oh, my goodness gracious. But I railed that sucker because those guys were going to beat one another so that they made sure that they finished in the top three. They were going to podium. Well, if you didn't do it right, you found yourself coming down and around into what? Into to just, just a fantastic ride. And so those guys, and you know, guys being guys, a bunch of them piled up in that first turn. And I just continued to rail right on around. I finished on my feet, on my bike, while they were picking themselves up. And you could hear the crowd just screaming and yelling. And, oh, it was just the best feeling. Just the best feeling in the world. I had beat those guys. Okay. I didn't finish first. I think I finished either third or fourth. But That's I'll tell amazing. you this. Talk about appreciation for my being there. And the guy said, you know, Kitty, we're going to work to make sure there are women's classes. And, I, and that's all I wanted. All I wanted was for there to be women's classes. Now, people wanted to know, well, why did I? Look, I grew up with five brothers. Some were older, some were young. There was nothing my brothers could do that I couldn't do better. You're not going to tell me that I can't get out there and run with you guys. I used to, I used to do better than my husband all the time. So, uh, you know, and, and, and it wasn't a, a, a big deal. Uh, it, it wasn't something that we riddled, you know, needled one, one another about. I remember racing, oh, we were in Farmer City and uh, we, we went to Cape together, came out and he went down, and I just continued to race, continued to race. He said, why do you stop and help me? Oh, no, 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 that's not how this works. This <laughs> works like cross the finish line that I'll come back and check on. 
<laughs> which I did, which I did. Uh, but uh, you, you know, getting getting the sanctioning bodies to recognize that women are great racers, you know. And now, hey, I'm pushing now. I am pushing so that we get a a uh, 61 and over. My class is 56 and over. Okay. I would like to have a same class that the older men have because uh, the next oldest, I think, is 63, 64. I'm 75. Okay. All right. Now, I'm not going to stop racing. And I can't beat all those women out there, but you know what? They know I'm there. They always know I'm there. And I tell you, make a boo-boo. I'll just go around you. And I'll wait for you at the finish line. But uh, of that, yeah, you know, I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm continuing to do this because I want more women and girls to get involved, to be a part uh, uh, of the sport. And there's no reason, there's no reason why we can't. Um, I love that. Yeah. I. It, you know, what is, and I know that. We have to start wrapping this up because um, yeah, I know you have to go and I want to be respectful of your time. And we're going to have to, I'm going to have to bug you about doing this again mm -hmm. because yeah. yep. there are conversations that we have not had yet. I know. Yet. <laughs> um, but, uh, but it's been so much fun. But your, your push to get women and girls on, on bikes mm -hmm. and – your investment into students to teach them how to work on their bikes, how to ride their bikes, how to put mm -hmm. their bikes on buses, how to use them for transportation. Right. Um, and and one thing that I absolutely love is that you race, but your push is not to get people ra racing specifically. It's to get people right. on bikes. On bikes. All and on bikes. what is the value I, and I'm sure there there are many, and you could probably go on for a long time about about the values to it. But what are some of the key values that you see people gaining, or the the key value adds to somebody's life because of bikes? You know what, health and well being. Mm -hmm. That is the key. Okay. You can ride your bikes, you know, and now even with e-bikes, I say there's no excuse anyone cannot get on a bike and 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 just ride and have fun. That's the other side of the coin. This is fun. I, when I'm racing, I am having fun. It, this is also uh, helping me as I continue to use this. I'm going to stay young within my mind as long as I can. And one of the things we know is that when we engage in those healthy, healthful activities, we add to our life expectancy. Now, I know there may be boo-boos because Lord knows I've had them, okay? But there is learning from the boo-boos that I've had. Uh, uh, an, an example was um, back in 2017, uh, I'm at Rockford. I am walking my, I had, I had practiced. I'm walking my bike back up the path, back to where my RV is. And I stepped in the chuck hole and I broke my leg, my ankle. Okay. That was, that was the Thursday before racing Friday, Saturday, Sunday. All right. Now, I wasn't even on your bike. That's the thing. And that's what people said. Kitty, you weren't even on the bike. No, I was not even on my bike. Okay. I tell you what, I'd never heal so fast. Keep in mind, I'm an older woman. In six weeks, that cast was off. I was back to racing again. All right. That does not surprise me at all. <laughs> but, but, but you see, everything is learning. I'm continuing to learn. So what did I do when I had that cast on? Well, now, you know, I got stuff set up here in the house. So my cast and the rest of my body and, and my husband adapted the, the left side of the pedal so that 
my with my cast, I was still able because I had to. I had to maintain because I'm I was I, I, I um I'm I'm still racing for that nag number for the year. So I'm so I'm in, I'm in the top ten, and I did. I finished in the top ten. But 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 you know, learning to do things with that with that cast though couldn't stop. I recently had my second back surgery. I had it the day after Grands for, for this past year, for 23, okay? That was the 27th of, uh, uh, 27th of the 28th of uh, November. I turned my phone off, so I can't tell you. Uh, I'm back to racing. Now, what did I do between the time I had that back surgery? That was because that sciatic nerve, once again, was misbehaving, so I had to have that taken care of, all right? Well, in my house, I have the little elements to help me continue to work out and stay healthy. The only thing I was not really able to do as much as I wanted was keeping the leg muscles, especially mm -hmm. my thigh muscles, like I wanted, okay? But that's okay. As I told people, I'm riding my way right on back into where I'm gonna I'm gonna be as as competitive as I was last year. Well, doesn't your back hurt anymore? No, I had the back taken care of. Okay, and that's a part of as you age, you you shrink. Um, I only have four lumbar as opposed to five. Okay, the average body, yeah, the average body has five. You have five lumbars, okay? Okay. I only have four, okay? Um, and so I'm, I, once upon a time, believe it or not, I was five foot eight. I'm five four, honey, on a good day. All right? Okay. So so you shrink, but author also has, has, has really mm, messed with the body. That's the other reason I, 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 I do this, Okay is because I have I have this author and 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 it's not like I can take off out and put him over here that ain't happening so I have to deal with it in a way which keeps me healthy the other thing we talk about with kids is what we consume what we put in our bodies okay and so I'm I'm lactose intolerant I'm gluten intolerant I'm very careful so even when I go out to eat with people, I'm very careful. Um, I'd like to tell you I get eight hours of sleep, but that wouldn't be telling you the truth. <laughs> I, I'm, a, I'm a night owl. And so I just deal with it, okay? I take my vitamins and my minerals. Those are very important. Uh, and and I... I, I I wear I wear your glasses here because I can't see I can't you are fall without them, okay. Okay. And so every year I I, I do see see my eye doctor, um, because of my age my my own physician sees me twice a year. Okay, they they know everybody in this world everybody in Des Moines knows what I do. That's why my hand doctor asked me how much longer am I gonna be racing. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Somebody can tell me about anything that could be used or anything. I, I'm I'm not one who wants to keep ingesting meds. Okay, is there a is there a gel or a lotion that helps could help to reduce the the pain? Because this is twenty four seven. Okay. okay. Well, well, we're calling I mean, people out. If if you can help I, help Kitty's hands. Yes. Need... Yes. 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 Yes, yeah. yes. Um, but but otherwise, I'm I'm continuing to do those kinds of things that keep my mind healthy, that keeps my body healthy, that's and that's amazing. what it's all about. And and I I, I want to be able. By the way, I am uh, I do have a, a a bike company that's looking for um, the, well the 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 I race for on two wheels. And so Matt is going to look for, I'm looking for a trike. Now, not the kind, you know, the, the not because I had that. I'm looking for one where I'm going to be sitting up high, like the tricycle I had as a kid. 
But this is going to be an adult trike. It's, it, it is going to be electrified. Trust you me. Uh, because I'm still going to be working with kids. Mm. Learning how to ride their bicycles. Only I'll be riding, only I'll be riding an e-trike. I love so, that. Uh, yeah, hey, why not? Here's, you... the other, here's the other thing I understand. My my race bikes are light. I, I can I can pick them up and move them any way I want to. But my e-bike is heavy. And I, I've, I've gotten to the point where I don't trust myself um, with that. Okay. And so if I go to an e-trike, then I won't have to worry about two wheels, but rather there's a third, there's a third wheel. And, it, and it would be much safer. And that's what I'm always looking for. I always talk. That's why I, when I am no longer safe, and I, and I don't know what's going on with my... <laughs> Just keep stepping over. Yeah, I mean, it's misbehaving. And I'm not saying, <laughs> come on, give me a break, baby. Uh, but but, but I, I want to continue to cycle. That's the other side of the coin. I still want to be able to engage in cycling. I so, love that. Early in the episode, you talked about life and joy, and mm -hmm. and all I could think about was the amount of joy that that kids have because you were talking about the parents that come up to you yeah. and say it's because of you that they're that they're racing, and yeah. you want to you want to give the credit to the kids, and the kids have said, well, if Miss Kitty's doing it, then you can too, you can right. And, uh, and so the amount of joy, whether, whether direct or indirect that you have brought to kids because their parents are racing or parents, because they're now racing or people that never thought they'd get on a bike, but the amount of joy that you have contributed to people's lives is insurmountable. And I, I'm in awe and I'm so thankful to have to have met you and then to have you as a part of this sport because the value you have added is absolutely incredible. Well, thank you. Thank you. And and and, and as I tell people, you know, once again, it's not about me. It's about we and the. Because I'm gonna be out here doing it. It, it doesn't matter. I'm I, I'm still gonna be out here doing my little thing, but 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 know that that it's it's about us, and 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 so. Uh, and I think that's what makes you so incredible as well is that you're not, you haven't done any of it to look for attention to look for appreciation. It's yeah. purely to give back and to teach and to help and to foster a sense of for these people independence, their own joy, their freedom. Yes. Their, which is, you know, because uh, uh, bicycling will foster n in independence in one's self, but also the incredible learning that continues to take place. I, I am still, I am still learning about cycling. Okay, be be because I want to be better at it. And, and I got to figure out ways to be with, with these crazy hands. I got to figure out ways to be better at cycling. And that's, that's the beauty of it. It's incredible. You're always, you're always learning. Always. I think, I think there are so many things I didn't, I didn't go into this interview expecting to ha have so many things personally to pull and so many so many value adds to me and i knew that i knew that conversation with you was going to add so many things but the inspiration that you have given me to to push through determination and to persevere and all those yes. things i just yes miss kitty i'm so thankful <laughs> for the conversation and, and, that we've been able to well, have well you are so welcome but understand i am still even myself continuing to engage in a manner where uh, as I tell people I am a lifelong learner and it's not and, and cycling is not the only thing I am a I'm, I am a history buff 
and I'm loving learning about and sharing with others, which which I've been able to do. Um, his, history of you name it, we can we can delve into it, dig into it. You know. Wow. Thank you. You are welcome. I you will. Know. I am going to reach out to you and we will try to find some time where I can, I can borrow some of your time again to dive into <laughs> some more conversations. Um, but for now, thank you so much for what you have contributed. Um, and Oh, the last question that I, that I ask everybody is uh -huh. who do you know that I need to know and have on the show? Oh, wow. Okay. Um, well, now here's someone who I would look for you to have on the show because I've now gotten her into announcing at Nash's. Oh, yeah. That's the other thing I pushed for. The There, there was a female uh, who, who has since passed on, but she was a great announcer, not just BMX. She also announced uh, at, at other types of uh, venues. Are you and talking about Linda Dorsey? Linda Dorsey, honey. Yes, indeed. And you know what? Next time we own, I can't show you my helmet because it's, it's in the RV. But Linda and I became best of friends. And I'm going to show you if I can. One of the things is I have all kinds of bracelets. And these are all cycling related one way or the other. And oh. uh, Linda actually came to Iowa and rode I... rag. Oh, she did. And I can't see her stuff. bracelets. No, I know. Oh, oh you there we go. See. Oh, okay. Here they are. Whoa. Are. Okay. And I bet you my, Lin my Dorsey bracelet. Oh, my Dorsey bracelet is somewhere. It Here it is. Oh my goodness gracious. Okay, so when when Linda passed, bracelets were made, and uh, oh, it's this funny looking green one. Oh, oh, there oh. it is. Here it is. It's this green one. Okay, but on my helmet, I have a, a huge, and and people see it all the time. Linda is on my helmet. I have a jersey a Linda Dorsey jersey. But I think it's so important to continue to get women into announcing. And so from our track, her name is, and I'll have to give you her information, uh, but Cindy Collingwood, she has three sons who race. Okay. Cindy has now, let, uh, let me, I'll send you her contact information. Okay. okay. I'm looking forward to it. Okay. But um, for grands, I just went up to, to uh, and I wish I could call his name who was announcing. And I said, I have someone you need to put on the mic. And he said, okay, Kitty. Well, who is it? I told him who it was. And I found her do during the, uh, uh, doing grands and I said Cindy come on come on it's your turn it's your turn to be on the mic okay well I'm going to tell you right now not only he but others who are with USA BMX said oh my goodness she is fantastic well she and her sons were racing last weekend uh, because Friday the Friday race in Virginia was to qualify for Worlds, which will be held uh, this year uh, in South Carolina. Okay. okay. Um, I was there in 2017. I qualified in 2017. That was the last time I qualified for Worlds. And that's okay. You had to, the class was 40 and over women. And I will never forget the women said, how in the world? Because I qualified at Pflugerville, which is near Austin, Texas. Okay. I had to come down that big old hill. Okay. Uh, that wasn't exactly my most exciting day. So I was the last one to get down the starting hill. 
But I wound up qualifying because one of the things I did was I walked that track a couple of times before I got on it. And I went to the track director. I said, you know what? Well, something's fishy here about this track. Tell me how in the world I could race this track and I got to beat these 40-year-old women. And he said, Kitty, here's what you do. When you get to that third turn, you're going to cut like crazy. And then you're going to pedal that fourth straight. Because it automatically pushes you out. Okay? Which means you're going to go extra yardage. That's how I got qualified. But anyway, Cindy, this past weekend, also was on the mic again. And I, you need to hear her story. Okay. I, 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 uh, I'm, I, I'm so amazed at what she has been able to do. I couldn't get her to ride, but that girl has a has a has a way of you. You're just so excited when she is is announcing. She announces at our track, but I'm tell you what: when you get to announce at, at nationals, that's a big deal. That's a big deal. And and I'm saying USA BMX needs to put her in the mix where she's going to get a little, you know, something, something for, for, for announcing because she's darn good. She And so excited. Well, I'm excited to talk to her. So I'm excited I will, to meet her. I will send, I will send, and I will let her know that I am doing this uh, because I want her to, I want her to continue. And, she, and you know what? She is so humble. I get that, but she has the voice. That's she, amazing. You, know, you, have a, you have to have a certain tempo when you when you. I announce and I go, oh yeah, yeah, yeah okay, yeah, you know. <laughs> but she knows how to do it. So she oh, is someone God. you. I would love for you to meet and and to have conversation with. That's but amazing. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, Miss Kitty, once again, thank you so much for your time. Oh, your conversation, your inspiration. Um, thank you for writing and uh, being such a, an ambassador for the sport of BMX. And, and we'll get together again. M Sounds maybe good. Even, maybe even at a track somewhere. So where do you, so where you guys race? Um, so right now we're in the process. We're from Northwest Washington. Oh, well, yeah. So you're in Tulsa now. We are, yeah. We're moving to Tulsa. Yeah. So, so we're close to you. Yes, you are. Not only that, but 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 there are actually five tracks. But 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 there are four tracks. There are four tracks right in the in the in the Tulsa. I tell you what, you can get five days of racing in in the Tulsa neighborhood. I know because I come down there often. So one of these times when I know I'm going to be there, I'll let you know. Uh, Perfect. Uh, because yes, I do come down uh, well, quite often. Because, well, because we will be here. We will be completely moved about the end of May. Okay. Um, and so, uh, yeah, if you if you come down this way, either summer or fall, we yes. would love to see you. Yes, I will definitely be doing that. So you better believe it, Jay. And uh, yeah, and thank you so much for inviting me to be a part of your podcast. You're very welcome. Have an incredible day, and we will definitely talk soon. Okay. <laughs> Bye, okay. Miss Kitty. Goodbye. Bye-bye. Thank you for joining us in today's episode. It is because of people like you and our sponsors who make this whole thing possible because they have a desire to see the sport grow. If you would like to get involved in the mission of BMX Breakthrough, you can start by going to your local track, find a way to volunteer, help out, and serve there. Or you can go to our website, bmxbreakthrough.com, in order to donate, find out about sponsorship, or learn more.